that? <laughs> Hell yeah! Woo! Good God Almighty! What is going on guys? Welcome to another episode of Bubble of Bassin. Uh, today we're going to do something a little different. Uh, it's not one of my normal videos. Uh, I had a viewer, he might be a subscriber, I'm not sure. But if you are, I appreciate it, buddy. Um, he uh, he requested a certain type of video that um, I normally don't do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this video for this guy. And uh, hopefully I can help him out. Um, and then he was also asking about Monster Bass. Now Monster Bass is the best box on the market. That's why uh, they have the hashtag, the better box. Uh, they don't send you a bunch of junk. Um, they're tailored to the region where you fish and the state you live in. And also they do everything on the certain time of the year that's going on at the current time. So that way you have the right baits to put fish in your boat or catch fish in general. Uh, this box is basically for every level of uh, fishing for everybody. So that way everybody can catch fish. Now, why do I say this box is for everybody? Uh, this box has baits in it that everybody can use. And they also come with certain things. Uh, like if you get a pack of worms, you get a certain pack of hooks with it. Um, and Rick just does a great job of taking care of everybody. He sends you cool stickers. Uh, they also give you uh, 10, $10 off your first box. So if you go in the link below and you click on uh, the link for Monster Bass and you get your first subscription going, uh, you can get $10 off. I think it's uh, Save 10 or something like that. Rick and Monster Bass always hook you up. Their customer service is great. So stay tuned for uh, my Lunker Hunt um, takeover box next week. Um, Monster Bass should be uh, getting it here soon. Uh, I think everybody that's part of the first 2,000 boxes gets uh, the Lunker Hunt takeover box because they sell like hotcakes. But uh, overall, I really think Monster Bass is the best box because I've been through a couple subscription boxes. And... Uh, I just think Monster Bass is the best box. I mean, the videos speak for themselves and the box speaks for itself. So, you know, it's, it's y'all's choice, but I think Monster Bass is the best box. So uh, stay tuned and I'm going to get into this video. All right, so I'm going to start off by showing y'all the line I use and um, why I use it. Uh, the red label, fluorocarbon, Seaguar line. I like this because... It's abrasion resistant for one. It's got a coating on it that's just super strong. Like I remember one time I was going through a dock with it and I hit barnacles and it like cut it, but it didn't break off and I got the fish in the boat. But this is 15 pound uh, fluorocarbon, uh, 200 yards on this spool. And I like using 15 pound because it's the best uh, of both worlds. It's not super thick, but it's not super thin. Uh, this is like 11 bucks at Walmart. Um, you can't beat that for 100% fluorocarbon. Um, and then the hooks I use are Gamagatsu EWG hooks. Uh, you can't find these at Walmart. They're either at Bass Pro, you gotta order them, or uh, they're you'd be probably at their, your local tackle shop. But this is a 5 odd hook. And then I have uh, a Wu Tungsten flipping weight. This is a 3 8 I also have blue tungsten uh, pegging, a little pegging set here. These are to peg your weight so they don't slide up and down the line for a Texas rig. I'll show you all the difference uh, here in a second. And then I use my custom uh, Bubbleville Custom Baits football screw lock. This is a 3 8 ounce. You got your screw lock and then a uh, 4 out hook here. I got a bag of Venom Dream Crawls. These are the green pumpkin. I have a uh, bag of Venom Salty Slings. These are a Cinco style June Bug Bait. And then I have a uh, King Snake 10 inch Ribbon Tail Worm. Uh, I'm going to show you all how to rig these up with uh, the Screwy Lock, the Texas Rig, and then the Peg Texas Rig. So stay tuned. Now I'm going to show you all like the basic knot that everybody learns when they first start fishing. Um, a lot of y'all probably know what this knot is, but I'm going to show it anyways. So what I like to do is I like to take my pinky and stick it on the edge of this wide gap hook. Take my line, thread it through the eyelet, like so, about eight inches or so. And then what I like to do is pinch both lines. And all you do is just rotate the hook and twist it and twist it and twist it and twist it and twist it, and twist it about eight times. 
and then you take your tag end that's not on your main line and you come through this bottom loop just like this now to the bottom loop and then you come through the top loop you grab that and your main line and then you cinch it tight right and then after you get done with that cinch it to the hook and there you go you got a, a clinch knot this is one of the basic knots you tie for anything now with this being said I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take the tag end and snip it off and what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to rig a weightless Senko a lot of people like throwing Senkos weightless so with the EWG Gamagatsu hook uh, what I like to do what I like to do is uh, take it you want to take the head of the bait and you want to come through just like this right through the middle maybe about a quarter of an inch come through just like this slide it on up see the lure keep you want to twist it in get the lure keep to stay just like this and then you want to bury this hook just like this so that way you're weedless See, now you have no hook exposed. Uh, your lure keeps up here. So when they bite it, the hook will come out just like so. Sometimes I like to let the hook right up here um, if I'm not getting hooked up good enough. But uh, and then I just tuck the tip of the hook back in the worm there. But that's a weedless rig. Uh, basically how you fish this, you throw it out and let it sink slowly. It sinks due to the salt and the weight of the worm. And uh, it kind of darts and it kind of shimmers back and forth just like this. But yeah, that's the uh, the weightless kind of rig. Um, now, now I'm going to show you the uh, Texas style rig. All right, so we're just gonna tie the same kind of knot here. But first off, you take your bullet weight. You can use any type of bullet weight you want. Um, most people that are starting out like to use the smaller sized weight. I like using heavy, heavy stuff now. Um, I just feel like the better contact on the bottom is better. So you take your bullet weight and you slide her on the line first. And then you take your hook and you want to do the same exact thing as you did before with tying your knot. Remember it's called the clinch knot or the fisherman's knot. So what you want to do is uh, go ahead and twist her up about eight times. Not too much because if you twist it too much it's bad. It'll make your knot weak. So twist it up, go through the bottom. Go through the top. Center on down, and then there you go. Your line's tied up, and then you got your bullet weight down here. This is what makes a, uh, a Texas rig. This is what makes a Texas rig set up. He was running with it, like, hard. Really? Good stuff. Got back in here and snatched him out. The venom bait. Yep. This is the, uh, the very small dream crawl, but very small bass as well. The guy in my comments was asking how to uh, rig up a, a Kraken Crawl or uh, some type of Guggen bait. Um, I don't have any Guggen baits, so basically like I can show you other crawls and stuff that work. It's basically the same principle. So what I do for these is I go through the head of the bait, just like quarter of an inch, just like the Senko. And then I twist the hook where that lure keep is right on the bait just like that and then I tuck it right in the back of the crawl and you have 
your Texas rig and it slides by itself. And there you go. You got a Texas rig crawl. Now I'm going to show you the pegged version of the crawl. So you have a loop right here with this peg. You take your line, you slide it through the loop. You pull out some tag line. And what you do is you take this little this little stopper right here and you pull it on through. And then now it's stuck on your line. So what you want to do now, come through with the tag line. After you got your bobber stopper on, come through with your bullet weight and it'll be down here. And then you want to take your bait and you want to tie it back on. Remember, twist it about eight times. I don't tie this knot anymore. Uh, the reason of that is I don't like where the tag end is sticking through the bottom of the knot. But um, this is the most simplest knot for someone to start fishing with. So this is why I'm showing this one. But yeah, I'm coming through. I went to the bottom, through the top, cinched it. And then boom, there you go. Cut the tag line off. So y'all remember how I put the peg on? So you take this peg right here and you slide it all the way down until the peg gets stuck in the bullet weight and then your bullet weight does not drop anymore. I'm going to show you all a uh, knot that I like to tie the most. I basically tie it on every rig now instead of the fisherman's knot like I've been showing you all. So what I do is I put the line through the uh, eyelet of the hook. And I got both pieces of the line stuck together right here. I'm pinching it on my right hand. And I pull it forward where I have the tag line free back here. I got the, the main line up here. So what I do is I, I take the, the tag line and I put it on my index finger. And what I do is I wrap this around both lines that are pinched together, just like this about eight times. And it should look like this. You got a loop up here and it's all wrapped. Both lines down here going through the eyelet of the hook. So what I do is I take the tag end piece, I go through the bottom, and then I go through the top. And then once this gets cinched down, just like this, barely cinched down, I lick it real quick. And then I cinch tight, and then voila, boom. You got one of the strongest knots. And here she is right here. Now this is what I do with the, uh, the crawl. Like I'll take it off this hook here. And uh, all I do is take the screw lock and screw the bait onto the screw lock. like so, and then I just take the, the hook and barely put it in the back, just like a Texas rig. And boom, we got a Texas rigged football crawl. Now what makes this football head totally different than an actual Texas rig is wherever this bait lands, it falls. And then when you're pulling it along, it actually stands the claws up, the claws up so that way it looks like the, the pinchers and stuff are in its defensive position. That's what makes a bass want to bite it more is when the, the crawls are in this defensive position. So it looks like they're trying to like not get eaten. So they're always standing up like this. But what makes this football crawl different is that when it falls, it stands up just like this. A regular Texas rig just lays down and you drag it. But uh, any way I just showed you is basically weedless. So... You could throw this in any type of uh, structure or cover. Um, but yeah, hopefully this video helped you, buddy. All right, if y'all check out my Venom Baits video, remember I was talking about the ribs on the Dream Crawl, how they disperse and make bubbles? Check this out. Watch this replay. Now, once this uh, crawl gets yanked up, if you pay attention, you'll see the shadow of the crawl and the jig flying through the air. And I'm pretty sure fish can see that when something's flying through the air and they go down and track it.